We were just stoked and saw music, and now it's a way of life. You know, before it was yeah. something I thought I just did, and I was blessed to have. But now I realize, pff, dude, I'll be like 90 years old, dude, shredding if I can. Be brutal, dude. Rolls aren't brutal, so what are you gonna ah! do? What are you gonna do rolls for? You know, just like a rolls well, aren't brutal. Yeah, dude. Blast over here, blast Clip over that. here, blast right there. You know? <laughs> Clip that. Yeah. Use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code HEAVY at checkout and get 15% off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. Diego Sanchez, you write some of the most brutal shit I've ever heard in my entire life, and I am honored uh, that you made the drive here, so uh, I appreciate the fuck out of you. Thank you for being here, man. You got it, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Good to Looking see you. Pleasure. Yeah. yeah. How was that drive? It took you five hours. What's up? Oh, not much, dude. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, me and Mary hanging out on the drive here, and you know, pulled over to the store, and all of a sudden, make a left, and you should make a right, and all over the place, you know? Yeah. Then had a nice little family talk, you know, on the way here. So got in Great. a good zone and fucking, you know, mobbed out. Great. But, you know, it's always, when you have a kid, dude, it's so hard to leave when all you want to do is spend your time with them and yeah. the juggle, the juggle of like your passion and, and life and your kid. I know. You know I just, I'm like, <laughs> yes, sorry, but whenever she wants me to hang out, it's like, I can't just, all right, man, I'm fucking late. Rah. You know? Yeah, After your time. dad. Yeah, yeah. How's that been for you? That 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 that's a crazy transition. Dude, nothing better. Like nothing. Really? Like I don't know. Like you know, music, a part of you and your creation, the frequencies and vibes of life, but a mm-hmm. procreation, like, and having a child that's amazing and awesome. The reflection you have afterwards, if you're one of those people that constantly reflects and steps yes. outside the box and fucking you know, la la la, mm-hmm. makes life worth living and. You no longer have to wonder why you're here or what kind of an impact you're gonna have because you know that that's can like you. I already know I pass it down to her and she's got the best qualities of myself and her mom. Wow! And she's gonna pass it on to everybody else. And she's got exactly. the music genes, so you know she got more frequencies and life to pass on for eternity, just like us. I know. Like, what kind of music are you passing on? Just, I mean, just out of curiosity. Uh, you know what, man? She's from going to kindergarten. She's a better she, math. Actually, is what she's picking up fastest, as opposed to like, you know, reading, writing, and all that kind of stuff. She wow. gets math a little better. So, mm-hmm. and then her first instrument was drums. Like my brother got a little, got her a couple kits. Yeah. Get all cr- you know. <sighs> just the, yeah, she can't play no rock and roll on drums, bro. She just all about ah, you know, brutal death on drums. But uh, you know, that was when she was younger, and now she likes she likes to sing and a lot of like you know, she'll do gutturals with me or something. But most of the time, no, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, most of the time, most of the time it's either trap or pop. But she really will like vibe into like with the ah, you know, and Frozen and. You know, she loves Elsa, and she, everybody else gets bored, but I, I fall in love every time I hear it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know, I know what she's got. It was like, she was like six months old, and a commercial came on, and until I started playing bass and cephalotropy, my ear, I didn't really know, like, this key, that key, and you know, I played, I learned how to play just by myself, you know, mm-hmm. seeing, watching MTV and people shred, and I'm like, oh, your yeah. fingers do that, fucking here we go, you know? Yeah, okay, here's a power chord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, put your fingers here, and... So, you know, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. yeah. That's a way to put it. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know what I mean, dude? Oh, my so, goodness, dude. Yeah. So, uh, so musically and the evolution, you know, I've been doing it for uh, 46, been playing live since I was like 16. And it's pretty dope, man, because there was a commercial and I heard, you know, the melody. Yeah, you can pre, you already know, you have a premonition of what's already going to be the next, you know, mm-hmm. the end of the song or how the song flows. Mm-hmm. And, she was just cooing and stuff, and all of a sudden, ah, and I was, and she was fucking right on key, dude, with that next part. When I was coming down the hall, and I just, it clicked already. I was like, damn, she's got way more than I did. I got, you know, I'm a, I'm a guitarist, you know, bass player, but I'm a percussionist in my head and the way, I, and the way I write. 
Yeah. You know, and Ricky, you know, when he was playing drums, total opposite. He was a guitar player first, and he's, you know, that's why him and I gel so well with each other because he's a drummer that plays guitar, and I'm a guitarist that plays drums, and we both just wanted to be the darkest, sickest, heaviest, most brutal, no melodies, anything, you know? So I yeah. think in my daughter's attack to life, she gets that, but mm-hmm. she's got a lot more pop and melody than than i do <laughs> man adding that pop and melody in death metal dude yeah Whoa. i know yeah she'll be she'll be gnarly man she'll get it she'll she'll be 10 steps ahead of everybody else hopefully it's totally you know? what uh what bands have you played around her uh well i took her to go see suffo we were gonna go and no. see them live you know she got to hang out on the bus and say what's up to the bros and uh anything that i do live like i show her Practices. She's been to TVV practice, violently vomit practice with Joseph and I. Yeah. She's been to Cephalocity practice, you know, and I just whatever friends that I'm checking out, you know, online. She'll. Yeah. Who's that, Papa? Who's that? Who's that? You know, it's my friend right here, and you know, I'm gonna be jamming with those guys soon or coming up. So you know, a lot of times different festivals and whatnot. It's nice to brushing up on your tunes for bands you don't know or you can go. Yeah. And, you know, see what who's playing what in their set, and then you know what songs you're gonna get punched for. Cause back yeah. in the days, man, you get super stoked to go and hear some songs with somebody, you know, and then they don't yeah. play it, and you're like, oh, if you would have only just played this song. It's always just one or two songs. You're like, why are you fucking playing this song? <laughs> I know, dude. And then, I drove five hours to see you from Escondido. Uh, yeah, for real, dude. You know, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh man, all I wanted to hear was marital decimation. What the fuck, you know? <laughs> Especially when we get like in like our age group, we're like, okay, I'll go, I'll go to show. And they didn't play the song. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? You're all the one I wanted, fuck. You know what you it know? took for me to go out? I was at the house. You yeah, fucks. dude. Yeah, yeah. You, you're lucky you got me out of the house, man. You know? Oh my goodness. That's yep. just bros, though. Like, if there's a friend in town, even if I miss the show or the you know the bands opening up or whatever, it's like just so I can see them afterwards and yeah. hang out and just be in in that vibe and that energy. You know what I mean? Like seeing you guys got to catch a show, but still we hung out afterwards, and it's just the camaraderie man and yeah you know it's like a constant flow when everybody's just stoked and it's all music and now it's a way of life you know before it was something i thought i just did and i was blessed to have but now i realize dude i'll be like 90 years old dude shredding if i can you're there already and dude uh, (laughs) we're at 90 i mean i'm at 90 years old already dude we're fucking going dude it was so cool to see you because yeah uh because we spoke at the uh, ginger show yeah. in, uh, in San Diego. It's really cool to see you there. And uh, yeah, what do you think about a band like Ginger? Dude, they killed yeah. it. You know, somebody years ago when they for first blew up, my buddy's, uh, my buddy's brother fucking sent me like a text, hey, check out this Ginger band, man. They got some chick that does like the Raws like you do, you know? Yeah. And uh, and I peeped it out and I was like, oh shit, all right, you know? They got, I mean, not something I'd bump, but, sure. they, but they had a good sound and I was like, fuck, yeah. all right, they shred, you know? And then mm-hmm. the more they came around, you know, I jammed different songs or whatnot. And I was like, oh, okay, fucking, you know. Yeah. They're doing something. And then all of a sudden, I saw that you guys were on the same bill. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, talk about either, you know, like doing some cross fucking phasing with some bands. Yeah. It's like it was actually a great blend. And the fans, everybody there was just, everybody had the same energy. And they were just yeah. stoked for the heaviness that all you guys, and the melody, of course, that everybody brought. Mm-hmm. But then by talking to him afterwards, it blew my mind how, and opened my eyes and as to like just metal is metal, you know what I mean? Because a lot of the Ginger crew, and a couple of the members of the bands that I met, uh, you know, members in the band that I met were Discourge fans, and Discourge yeah. and Discourge is, I mean, like you know, we're fucking like one of the. There's not there's not much melody and things to to mm-hmm. grasp for people to be like, oh wow, I really like this band. You know, it's kind of either goes right by you or it fucking hits you like a ton of bricks and you get back up and say, wow, I want to fucking do that shit again. You yeah. Know? What was that? that was, then you just get hit with another train fucking right over <laughs> all over again, you know, just constant. Dude, constant. Just, just, just relentless, consistent brutality. Yep. Whole time, man. Whatever melody we come, we're like, oh, no, that part is kind of gay. Dude. <laughs> you know, we can't. This don't, okay, this is early 90s, 80s. Sorry if that wasn't politically correct, everybody. But, That's sick, But, you dude. know, we try, to, we try to just stay brutal and not write a rhythm that sounds like somebody else or yeah. write, write a rhythm that sounds the same as what we did already. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like there's, 
we we did something we constantly worked on, and luckily mm-hmm. the fans are they dug it and are still digging it. Apparently, you know, thirty, 30 years. years dude. I know, big gnarly man. Thirty 92? years later, yeah, mm-hmm. over thirty years, and you and you joined the band. I want to say ninety seven. Yeah, ninety six, ninety seven. Yep. Dude, that is like 25 years, over 25 years, just fucking brutal riffs. Oh, totally, dude. I was working graveyard at a gas station. Oh, my goodness. And I was in Escondido. And then I'd, so I'd be in Esco like three days of the week. And then I'd go to Pacific Beach, Mission Beach, where Maddie and Tony and uh, Derek were. So Derek would, Tony had already been through the ringer showing a bunch of guitar stuff, and even though mm-hmm. we were homies, he's like, I can't do it, Diego. I ain't got no fucking patience no more, you know? So Derek yeah. Derek and Maddie really wanted me to be a part of the Scourge. Mm-hmm. So Derek put in the work to show me the tunes. I learned the tunes on bass and then brushing up, you know, whatever chords with Tony I could. And yeah. I'll tell you, playing to the dem like Ricky Myers has his own flow on drums. He does. Like, Everybody thinks just by listening to it, like you try playing with that motherfucker, man. Like you, you play the demo all day long. You know, like Maddie got me uh, or he loaned me his baby Taylor and, and a metronome, and I sat there, you know, at the grass station, rewind and play on the tape deck, no tabs. Just look, I can remember, you know, a lot of rhythms. On a tape deck. Yeah, rewind and play on a tape deck and before the demos, and uh, remembering, you know, what Derek showed me, and fucking, I go, I think, I, man, I had that shit tight down you know go home play it on my rig raw, put the demos boom go to practice Psh. ricky <laughs> Rick. i would anticipate after a couple of practices where i was way off i would anticipate like ricky's little isms or flow man and wow nope couldn't do it you know took a took a lot to actually get on with that dude until you just you know the the flow it's all about flow flow you know it's and all you- about flow you had to figure out the flow and those little nuances with, oh, yeah. with, with, with this playing style. Oh, totally. You know? Yeah, and then from years of jamming together, we, you know, you know, you can anticipate what's, what's going to happen in the transitions. And mm-hmm. one day, you know, one day is going to be faster or slower than the other day. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, so you were practicing before. So you're getting ready to enter your life with Disgorge and, and have this life, but you're, Working graveyard with the acoustic guitar. Yeah, learning probably the most brutal death metal on the planet. Oh yeah, essentially. And you're playing yeah. and you're practicing it on acoustic. I mean, that with sounds like with a metronome. Because like... I had to line uh, up. You know, I was yeah. playing strangulation. It was all kind of like morbid cannibal. You know, with some suffo. Mm-hmm. But and it, so it's all. You know, it wasn't. So I can't. You know. I couldn't, I'm not Steve Ashim, dude. I can't downpick that fast, you know? And uh, believe yeah. it or not, he's a badass guitar player as, as well as a drummer. I, I, hear, I hear Steve is like a legend. <laughs> yeah. S- S- secret legend. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, him and Glenn are, I mean, are OGs as well, you know? Yeah, holy, yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't downpick that fast, so I had to learn alternate, and that wasn't my forte per se. It was all the string skipping and the alternate picking. So yeah, that's when Maddie said, here, play, you know, Derek's, Super, you got to get that last note, that last note up, Boom. you know? That's yeah. why if you hear it, you know, not you know, to finish off the beat. So, mm. metronome, acoustic, and Maddie and Derek, like, this is the best way for you to to learn a technique and get shit down so you're solid. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a pretty loose guitar player as it is, you know, really a lot of feeling and yeah. I'll lock myself in a room for a little bit and then I'm like, what the hell am I doing this shit for, you know? <laughs> <laughs> still, hey. still do it, man. Yeah, yeah dude, feel, I, I feel you, man. Yeah. Same. I'm not Yngwie, you know, I got, I got too much flavor to give to sit there and just work on it and perfect it that tight and then yeah. beat myself up later if I ever don't, you know, I just got to keep it free, man. You gotta keep it free. Yeah, we're we're so hard on on, on ourselves, even when we practice perfectly. You're totally. like, oh, oh, this shit sucks, dude. I, I suck. <laughs> fucking, that's just how it is, I, dude. Yeah, I know. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Especially if you have a good day one day, and then all of a sudden the next day. And then day, you always right? compare it to that one good day. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah. It's but at least it's a reminder. I know I can do it. You know. Yeah. As, as long as you do it once, you have you have you have your new bar. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's yeah. like uh, it's like chasing the uh, dragon, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my goodness, dude. Yeah. But dude, you uh, you and Ricky has such a a chemistry in music because mm-hmm. I mean, 
I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, Diego, but a, a lot of people talk about you in, in my chosen genre of music. Mm. Uh, t- talk about you and Disgorge like as being one of like the heaviest bands on the planet. You know, like bands like obviously uh, us. You know, we're always like you know always looking at bands like you know you. Right. You know, and uh, so it's like it, it's just your style has really has death metal today has, really hasn't been done with the depth that you guys have, you know, the way like things were tracked, like on like, you know, uh, she lay gutted. There's like this dimension to it yeah. that I, I don't know how to put it into words. Like, like the flow of it, the way the guitars are, the way the drums are and, and the playing and the, and the, it sounds like a free flowing uh, way of writing. Yeah. This just hasn't really, I really haven't felt that way. And it's hard to feel like that way when you're listening to something so insanely brutal. You know, it's like, man, he, uh, so it, it explains, like, it just sounds like you and Ricky, and, and along with probably, like, like, the rest of the band, have, like, you're in a, sounds like you're in a garage. Yeah. And, like, okay, this is, this is the song, let's fucking hash it out in a garage, you're, it sounds, it probably sounds kind of good, probably, like, but probably, like, shit. Right. You know, you're just it's blasting amps in a garage, and you're, like, getting those little nuances and flows yep. to make, make sure it feels right, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. And we all, you know, we're counters. Yeah. You know, so, so whatever, I don't know how everybody else does it, but... You know, every time there's, there's a there's a, there is a reason and a rhyme on how Ricky and I follow each other. You know, we're like, oh, the seventh note of this one out of like fucking fifteen or whatever. Yeah. You know, you accent on the seventh first, and all of a sudden you come back on the eleventh, twelfth, and then it comes back, and the sixteenth is actually the first of the next. Mm-hmm. So it's like he'll do a certain accent while I'll do you know a little note on the third or something or like a harmonic or something, and we just. We do. We break it down to, I'm sure everybody else does because it all sounds sick, but that's how we would write. We just sit there and whether it took you three hours for one freaking rhythm or section to Whoa. actually write it as opposed to just feel it out, you know, or you know, it could take that long to write the album because we're constantly changing things and feeling it and learning, you know, off of each other. But when we actually like would just buckle down and let's learn this part, then okay, learn that part and then. If something happens afterward, like the score is just such a freestyle, like writing band, Ricky and I would just fucking rah, and I just come in. Some days you got a, a writing block, and then Ben would be working on something in the corner while Ricky and I are yeah. jamming for weeks at a time, and we're like, oh, fuck, you know, oh, we have nothing, you know, I can't create with the shit. Ricky's like, oh, you had a weed, let me bring you some weed. Oh, different, my goodness. Or different weed, you know, all of a sudden. Let <laughs> <laughs> me a different weed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's try it out, all right, and all of a sudden, woo. Oh. Like all over again. Oh my goodness! You know, he's like, "All right, Diego, we got it. Let's do it." Like, you know, and then, but we hit a wall or something because Rick and I mostly wrote, mm-hmm. and then Ben would just have this rhythm. It would just come in, and luckily he was always. It was either like the intro or the bridge or something to where we would just come in and boom, you know, it just a perfect, you know, just a perfect wall. We hit our own wall, and then mm-hmm. Ben would come in. Ben would come in with a wall and just be like, "All right, here." fucking knock this shit down and open up a whole new fucking world after that. Wow. Yeah. Gnarly, dude. Super rad. So when Ricky and I would just beat ourselves, you know, to, ax- to put all the accents in on this section, mm-hmm. keep on playing and see what happens, you know? And <laughs> nine yeah. times out of ten, good shit will come out of it later, you know? Yeah. It's like a, a it sounds like you're playing, it, like, like it is freestyle, like you're just playing, you're just jamming in real yeah. time and yeah. just hashing out. Sometimes sometimes things won't stick, it'll sound like shit. Yeah. But you're just, you're just, I assume you're just fucking blasting oh, yeah. and going to rolls and like, dun, 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 dun. And then you're like, just going. Yeah. And we look at each other and we're all, okay, yeah, do that again or fucking do, it's, faster, you know, yeah, or yeah. fucking, oh, yeah. you know, when you lean, lean into each other to, to get ready for the next change. Or, that's exciting, man. Or threes. Yeah. You know, when we look at threes, that's when you start shoving. You know? Oh yeah, so, dude. Or fast is you know. Yeah. We had our well, you know, each band has their own terms for sure. when you're doing some gnar, you know, fucking You like give them like you give them like like, like the look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you'll know, come out like a quick like Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 quick, yeah. quick, quick, quick little fucking yeah. rig. You're, you're trying to rip a point at the same oh, time. I know, yeah, dude. Oh my yeah. goodness. It's the best, dude. It's, oh, it is. It, it is the, it's like it is the best, you know? And back in the day we used to jam five nights a week, so it was just Oh, that explains that the had, fucking consistency. Oh yeah, dude. The uh, consume and well, especially consume era, but uh gutted and consume, those were all just five nights a week. You know, the only way wow. you're gonna only way you're gonna get somewhere is if you fucking put in the work and the practice and 
write, you know? We just have to... Even though it took us so long to put out albums, we were trying to write the whole time. Yeah, I mean, so uh, so you're writing Feely Gutted, but uh, it seems like you, o- you already had riffs and songs that were in your previous band, correct? Yeah, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, Strangulation was what Ben and I had in high school with Travis Ryan on drums. And so random. I know. High school kids, dude. That is so... <laughs> that is definitely history. Yeah, yeah. Travis and I went to uh, middle school together. And then we went to high school, and then I started. He's always been into music. Like I've listened to it, but that yeah. dude's that dude's been in music, you know, forever. Yeah, trying to just prove himself, find himself, fucking everything, dude. Travis, interesting is in it, you know. So he, uh, yeah, his first demo was Stigmata. He actually wrote to Metal Blade and was like, "Yo, here's my demo tape." And they're like, "What are you kids doing? This is fucking, you know, nothing." Ah, and he was like. Well, fuck it, whatever, you know? And I was like, well, you wrote to fucking, how, what? You know? I didn't yeah. even play guitar at the time. And I was like, you wrote to Metal Blade? What are you doing, you know? Yeah. And he did it. Every demo, everything he recorded, he sent it out and just kept his name. And now look at the dude, you know? He's like Metal Blade's BPAR guy, kind of. Insane. I mean, yeah, now, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Travis, if you don't, I mean, not aware, for those of you watching, listening, Travis Ryan is the singer of the legendary band Cattle Decapitation. And you guys is, by coincidence, the universe has put you in the same middle school together. That is so, that is so random. Totally, totally. Yeah, and he's all, dude, he was pumped for like a year and a half. Come yeah. on, come on, join my band, join my band. I want to become more brutal. I didn't have the confidence, you know. I was like, ah, I, you know, yeah. I play guitar, but I'm like a, a guitarist. I mean, I'm a skater, whatever. I'm going to go skate. I'm not going to practice, you know. Yeah. And then well, I busted my ankle, you know, was out, for, oh, was, out was out, for a while, man. I got really good at guitar, wrote a bunch of songs, and then... Mm-hmm. My brother and I played in a grindcore band, uh, Malefic Plague. Yeah. And then we got a bass player for a little bit, Tino. And then mm. next thing you know, fucking, I just started getting really good, dude. And my brother, you know, he'd fucking, I didn't really drink at the time, you know, so oh, he'd, wow. be, he'd be putting down the beers. And of course. When the drummer doesn't, when he doesn't finish a beat or yep. he comes in early, you know, big brother, little brother, it's your fault, you didn't. You know, and I was all, oh, you fucking I, suck. Yeah, I, I just, I, I didn't finish the rhythm, bro. What do yeah. you mean? You know, there's, I still got like two more notes. I know I didn't cut, you know? Yep. And then finally, I just, you know, just had enough, man. And I just said, fuck it. I got like five or six songs I wrote under my belt. And I went to Stigmata practice. And everybody was cool, you know? Ben was kind of hard up looking in the corner, like, what's this? Skate, of course. Skate rack kid doing coming in my garage, you know? Cause it was, yeah. It was practice at his mom's house, you know? Sick. And Ben was sick, dude. You know, he was scary as hell, hell looking, you know? When you look at him, he's nice, yeah. even though he's the nicest guy. He, look, he looks intimidating. He, <laughs> he does. Look, yeah, he looks gnarly. His you know? beard, bald. Oh, yeah. In high shape, school, he's got head. a beard and everything already. Oh, you know? oh, he had a beard in high school? Oh, yeah. That the on his chest all, you know? Oh, my goodness. So, uh, but all of a sudden, I started jamming, man. He's all, oh, nice, yeah. Here, another one. You got another one? Fucking boom, dude. I bust out like five, six songs. Travis is back there all, he's all, yeah, you know? Because he wanted to bring more heaviness as a they were playing like yeah. a lot of slayer death you know Sepultura, you know right, yeah. yeah not so much brutal and travis was already in a grindcore forever you know yeah so i came in and i was like all right well, we're doing some blast beats and some fucking rolls because he liked his symbol like sean reiner yeah. you know those kind of accents yeah and dude it was dope had a had a good run and then, you know, grow up, musician changes everything. And then from Discourage and Strangulation playing shows together, Strangulation didn't have anything for like a year and a half. And finally, you know, because I didn't ever want to leave and leave Ben behind when I when I jammed or joined another band or whatever. He was, mm. you know, my left-hand man, dude. So, well, wow. But I'm not going to go join another band and not have, you know, my, my, my buddy with me. <laughs> you know, yeah. losing members and shit. Yeah. Got all sensitive sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah rest, rest in peace, Ben, man. Yeah, fucking you know, it, you know. He uh, he passed away in 2008. Yep. And I've seen him. I've seen him with you guys so many times. <laughs> man, you guys just locked in, dude. Dude, it dude, was fucking nuts. He'd come to my house. I'd go to his house, and we'd just sit on the couch, and that's how I showed him rhythms. You know, no yeah. no tabs, no nothing. Just you know, we'd all we hang out all the time. So I'd go by his pad for the next day for practice or whatever. If, you know, if we were meeting at his house and. Mm-hmm. He'd be on his bed, passed out with his bass, <laughs> going through the rhythms last night. You know, that's a just lifer, dude. Beat that shit down, you know, beat it in your head. And after playing bass and stuff, he do. I don't know how he did it in Discord or like a lot of these other sick finger bass players do. You know, it's 
it's gnarly stuff, man. Yeah, how do you play the scourgers on on a bass? You 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 have to be a badass. Yeah, and and, and fall asleep with a bass on your chest. Yeah, you know you have to. You have. If you don't, then there's, uh, there's, yeah. no, there's no probably other way. Yeah, totally, dude. Totally. You know? Yeah. So, luckily, from playing shows with each other, we already partied with each other and had that vibe. So next thing you know, opportunity came up for the scores to get a second guitarist when they finished the, not the gray demo, but the second demo after it, the one that was released, the cranial demo. And they and they combined those and made the the, the, yeah, yeah, the record. the record through yeah. the extremities first. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, man, next thing you know, I came part of the Discourge camp, dude, and all the musician, you know, the musicians that have come and go. Mm-hmm. Luckily, you know, Ricky and I still talk and stuff, you know, and if he ever picks up his drums, you know, we could throw a couple tracks down or something, but... That'd be sick. Man, that vibe that we had back in the day, dude, there's a, re- there's a, we're all, there's a reason it was what it was, you there's know? There's a reason why we're, we're talking about it now in, in front of cameras and lights. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, totally, dude. That's yeah. it, dude, there's something yeah. to... It, again, I, I have trouble putting words to, to it, like, like what, you know... I mean, you experienced it, man. Oh, dude! Like, 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 like I was riding, just a kid riding that kind of death metal. Yeah, you know, yep. I got I got like a real like a lot like a big jazz background in my family, mm. and my brother's seven years older. He's he was all into anything he listened to. I basically was right behind him. Yeah. So when Slayer came out, like in the eighties, dude, when he in went, the 80s. when he went from punk to thrash. Psh, next thing you know, I go home. Oh, my brother's got his vinyls. He's all mm-hmm. metaled out. Just. Killing it, you know. I'd be air guitar playing, rah, you yeah. know, so sick, you know. Little grommet. Yeah. yeah. What was the band that you heard that was like, okay, I want to go, like, I'm, I'm, I need to go heavy as possible. Oh man. Suffo. <laughs> they were definitely the something that put set something inside. First, of course, Cannibal and course. Gore Guts and Morbid, you know. Mm-hmm. Trying to emulate those guys along with Sepultura and Slayer and of course. You know, all the thrash bands. But yeah, definitely when Suffo hit and I heard freaking those harmonics, dude, and just the the darkness of them. Mm-hmm. But then they also had Groove. Yeah. Like, how are you groovy and still like kind of the darkest, most brutal band, like consistently, kind of that same energy, the yeah. driving stuff? Because there was the other driving. bands, melting, melting dark kind of bands, but Suffo just. They were grooving, dude, and they were just hitting and all the weird sounds and the musicianship. You heard every freaking note they were doing. Yeah. No, no matter how shitty the recording was, fucking you heard, you know, Ter- Terrence and fucking Cerrito, dude. Terrence is a legend, you know, man. Freaking those, Sh- those dudes. Shout out to fucking And everybody Terrence, else dude. that played in, in their sh- you know in their shoes. Yeah. You know. Like, My goodness, you know? dude. Yeah, what dude. what what year is this? You think? Shoot, probably 90. 90? Yeah, 89, 90 for the picture probably. Dude, something. Mike Smith on drums, dude. Holy moly. I know. Can't fuck with that, dude. No. If you're in a, in a definite band, it's so crucial to have a drummer with personality, dude. It's so crucial, man. Yeah. We're like, oh, yeah, that's, that, that's them. Yeah. You know? Oh, and, yeah. And, and Ricky had this, like, kind of, like, we were talking about earlier. It's like this, like, like machine gun character to it. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, like, it's like a fucking machine gun. Yeah. He wanted to be brutal, dude. Rolls aren't brutal, so what are you gonna do? Ah! What are you gonna do rolls for? You know, just fucking rolls well, aren't brutal. Yeah, dude. Blast over here, blast Clip over that. here, blast right there. You know? <laughs> Clip that. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> oh well, until God. until Derek Roddy comes out and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, he just all of a sudden Rick's like, oh, what? So that's why I'm consuming the Forsaken. You know, yeah. there's a little bit more roll like. And gut it like what cranial? There's probably three or four rolls, which are like there isn't rolls in like, that. Huh? And then it goes. Boom, boom. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't there's notice your, that. There's your roll, and then gut it saying, "Wait, you know that might be." I didn't yeah. notice that. Oh yeah, bro. So it, it took seeing Derek be like, "Okay, wait, I'll throw in a roll on on consume." Oh yeah, yeah. When In Cold Blood came out, and then he went to Nile. All of a sudden, Rick was, you know, certain, you know, how there's certain things that impact like they just hit you like, okay, hit okay, you. that boom, boom, that's oh yeah. yeah, like when Rick first heard Gorgasm, he tried to line up with Derek. You know, he was like, how the fuck am I going to make my feet do that? Yeah. Ah, yeah. We'd show up. He'd be at practice like an hour. We were just doing this double bass trying to trying to match up. Oh, my you goodness. Know? I, I can't imagine those, those nights. Yeah, dude. And then 
all of a sudden, you know, same thing when, this, when the rules came out, it's just like, what, you know, I need to start incorporating some shit. And then that, the evolution of our writing, too, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. you need a little bit more. You can't just be blasting the whole time, you know. And then luckily it went from a Suffo blast to a Cannibal blast and then the offset, you know, Suffo blast, you know. What's the, what's the, the right, what's, right foot, left foot, where the, that lines up with the snare, oh, yeah. every beat. Da, 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 da. That's a, that, that's an offset blast? No, that's the, the Suffo blast. Suffo, yeah, but, yeah. But, but you said a, a. Offset is where it's the. Oh, the, I call yeah. it. I, split time. Split time? Oh, wow. I, I call it uh, a Euro blast. The I, Euro I, blast? I'm, 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 I'm not sure you have like, like, yeah, the fuck. That I like, all, like you know, alternating. Uh, yeah, yeah. I bought, I bought the fucking uh, Kevin Tally DVD on eBay because oh, I, I want to know how to blast beat. And yeah. I, I, I didn't play drums, but but the band always practiced in my house. So I always had a drum set. I'm like, oh my god, blast. Awesome. Yeah, and dude. I learned the, yeah, I think he called it like a Euro blast. So it just <laughs> kind of stuck, like, stuck in there. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking 15. Yeah, no, know? no way. It, it just kind of stays with you. But but dude, you that's it, awesome. But, but but you could have offset blast. Yeah, well, because because the, the beats offset. No, it's offset. Yeah, the offset. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we. Oh my goodness. Yeah, dude. That's how. Yeah, we we got the Suffo blast is the Mike Smith. You know, and then instead of calling it like the Sandoval, you know, the offset, we just call it, you know, the offset or the the bomb blast or the well, we call it the Cannibal blast, like the. The are those double are, bass? Are those the same thing, Cannibal and Bomb Blast? You think? Yes. Yeah, the same thing with the kids, yeah. just like double time yeah. and then like yeah, but the hi hat and the snare lock. Yeah, lock up with the right foot. Every fucking you know. Dude, when you have your own style and then the bands that are, that are the sickest call that part your band. Yeah. A supple blast, Camel Blast. I mean, you fucking did it. Yeah. Well, oh. we'd have our uh, our mo our mo rhythms. Yeah. Like basically, when you hear the scores doing their straightforward shit and there's some yeah. weird, you know, be like, yeah. all right, you know, we, we, we all, we need something to spice up this little transition here. You know, what can we do? Yeah. And then, fuck, I don't know, play something that kind of sounds like immolation. Oh, fuck, all right. You know, we try to, yeah. try to, try to get fucking, you know, all whizzy with it and shit, dude, of making it all weird. And next thing you know, that's the, you know, that's the MO. And then we write down the songs structure wise. Mm hmm. We'd have the DS side, the D, like basically when we're when we're grooving, that's our our DS side. Oh wow! DS side because it's got that DS side groove. Yeah, so this sounds like Legion. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, dude, totally. You know, Dope. like Once Upon the Cross type of type of groove. Holy moly! You know, yeah, yeah. So, so since uh, you mentioned that uh, you brought uh, five six songs from the previous band to Disgorge, so since it went into Disgorge, how were how were you writing riffs? For your previous band, that eventually those songs went onto the scourge. Like, how, how were you writing those? Those, those are riffs? just just the same. Just whatever I, I have in my head, I put it down, and then I go and hey, Travis, you know how do you try to play this beat or that beat or how do you feel under this? And then when Discourage had the first hiatus, when Ricky came back, he joined Strangulation. So. Mm. Cause I, you know, I didn't, didn't want to leave Ben behind course, and my brother course, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yes. The scourge all Keeps over you again. Dead. Yeah. You know, now we have an opportunity to bring him, have him as BR drummer. You yeah, know. Yeah. But the scourge had a little bit more clout, and Ricky was in San Diego, and my brother yeah. was already getting like a family and a house and all that stuff. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah. all right, bigger shit. And I already knew shitload of guitar songs. I mean, yeah. uh, Discord's tunes, you know? Yeah. So I was down, you know? I was like, hey, Ben, what do you, how do you feel about joining Discord? Because we all hung out. He's like, fuck yeah, let's do it, you know? What wow. about your brother? And I was like, well, that, that part's going to suck, but. <laughs> 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 Which it was. That's my older brother. That's, that's, He's the one that, that got sucks. me in. He's the one that got me into music, dude. So did you have to make that choice? Oh, thousand percent. But luckily, oh, luckily sucks, it was because, dude. you know, because he, he wasn't showing up to practice, you know? So how mm -hmm. are you? And he knows what it's like. He's. You know, he's the one that taught me the structure of coming to band practice and doing back practice because I go to his band's practices when he was on drums before, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So, you know, straight up, if you can't make it to practice, you're not learning anything or doing your part. And yeah. then if you've got prior obligations at home with your family, you're not going to be able to tour, you know, and then you get a good job. You're definitely yeah. not going to be able to tour. And we were no. that was the reason we did it once we started playing you know, live shows were like, fuck, yeah. man, I want to, you know, I want, I just want to play, go on tour and do shows. Yeah. Yeah. You guys all had it in your mind already. Okay. We need to like fully commit to this. So we go like, cause I mean, when like Shilly Gutty came out, I mean, you guys went all over North America. You guys went to South America, Europe. I mean, you guys yeah. fucking went all. We in, hit dude. it hard dude when we first came out. 
it was luckily long awaited. You know, Eric from Deeds Duty went out and took the demos everywhere that he went. So this gorgeous fan base grew from Deeds cruising around and playing shows, being like, oh, check these guys out from San Diego. So luckily huh. a lot of a lot of people had, you know, had already heard about us. So we were from, we're, from Eric. From Eric from Deeds, yeah. He, he'd go around, him and, you know, the band would just cruise around and, you know, that's how we heard about Origin and Safari Carnage. He'd come, yeah, he'd come through, dude, check these guys out. Check these guys out. So be- before Unique Leader, mm-hmm. he was already networking just he was already doing for that. dope bands. Never mind business. He was just like, dude, listen to this. Listen, like I got my own beef for the guy, even though he's dead, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I got a love and grace that I got to give him because honestly, just like Ben, you know, if it weren't for those dudes, who knows if Discord would be where where we are today. You know, definitely wouldn't be as big because Eric was showing it to everybody. Check these guys out. Boom. The grain demo and then the cranial demo. You know, not, even, not even out yet, but listen to Maddie Way's fucking toilet bowl vocals. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great description. You know? And that's the intro to the record. Yeah, that's so the, the, sick, dude. You can't open up a record... <laughs> Much better than that. It's just a girl. I know. Yeah, I know. It's like so let, let's just uh, do this. Yeah, it's kind of like anal cunt. You know, it's just a bunch of gnarly shit coming your way, and some of it you get, and some of it you don't. And yeah. when you hear like that that second demo from Discord, technically the third, but when it, when you hear oh, it, yeah. dude, man, and you're just like, well, and then all of a sudden there's a break where you can groove. All yeah. the all the technical stuff's gone, and you're all like, oh, you know, while well, your mind's going, what the. That you know, and also yeah. gung, 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 you're, oh hell yeah, and all of a sudden right back to it. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Ears and brain going like this the whole time. Every now and then you get to breathe. Mm-hmm. Just like playing the music, just like playing the instrument, you know? When you're, yeah. Don't realize you're holding your breath and you're shredding, oh, and yeah, all of a sudden true. you're going to a part and you're all okay, you're all, oh wow. Oh, I, gotta, okay, I, gotta, okay. I gotta physically breathe. <laughs> I gotta fucking physically do something. You uh Diego, you you touched on something that I'm very I'm very curious on. You uh, you said that you hear the riffs in your head, mm-hmm. so like you're literally like you like hear like a pattern or a riff and like you literally try to play it, correct? Totally. Like you're either you're either walking around your house and maybe you're skating or maybe like you're yep. taking a shot. You actually it's it's actually inside of you. Yeah, humming a tune. Not and not even not even necessarily the rhythm. It'd be like the beat rhythmically that I'm hearing. And then, which is pretty rad for after joining the scores because I always had that stuff in my head. I just whoa, I just wasn't good enough to play. So all of a sudden, I joined mm-hmm. the scores, and you have you know, to learn how to have to learn how to play the. <laughs> it, dude, it's, it, isn't that to. weird? How yeah. like a, a, a riff in your head is always harder than you actually play. Oh yeah. So then, then you you just have to like just the the, the action of getting it out is so it fucking pissed me off still, dude. Like, oh for I was sure. Trying to get it out, you're like, oh, it's not. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not what I have in here. Yeah. You know? So it's it, sometimes I'll spoil it, but yeah, it's that's just then you like you just put in work. At yeah. That, at that point, you're trying to get yeah. whatever is in your head out. Yep. You know, it's just super tough, dude. Totally. Hour and a half to two hours just for. Mm-hmm. Five seconds worth of music, oh, maybe. Oh, dude, don't even know? start with that, dude. Yeah. For, for real, yeah. yeah like, and that's only to get started. <laughs> that's only just to get started, dude. And it's, it's funny, like, and sometimes, like, you'll only that idea in your head will sometimes lead to something else. Yep. So whenever you get a sound in your head, you have to try to get it out because you don't know where, where it's going to go. Oh yeah. It's, so sometimes it's not it's not even about the, the sound in your head. It's about like what's going to come out yeah. after that if you sit down and do. Yeah. Like, it's amazing, dude. Amazing. Yeah. If we didn't have to work and raise children and we could just sit, <laughs> oh my sit in the studio all day and just everything that just came out of us, yeah. you know? Like, all the, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, Cardi B, do that chick, freaking sat there and wrote music constantly and just really? released mixtapes freaking constantly and just Cardi got B? it out. Yeah, dude. One of her, one of her lyrics, I heard that job, what, two mixtapes in six months, nobody's working as hard as me. Whoa. Da- damn straight. Just... You know, I know I got it in me, dude. I just never put it down. And when we're in that zone, it's nice. But now with a kid and work and, you know, mm-hmm. priorities, I got to be a dad first. Yeah. And I can't, I got just so many times I would go to leave the house and she's holding on to my leg. Don't go, Papa, don't go. And I'm all, you know what, fuck it. Two weeks before the show, I'll pick Man. up my guitar and, you know. Yeah. That's the life, dude. And eventually she'll, you know, I'll have the time eventually. Hopefully I'm still here. 
I think I think you're gonna be here for a long yeah. time, Diego. Yeah, I you're, think you're, I think so too. Your vibe is way too positive for you to leave us soon. Yeah, dude. I still we, got so much music that needs to come out, you, dude. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Dude, I need, need you need, too, man. You, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Honor, man. Hell yeah. It's fun. Where, where along in what year was it? Uh, you along in your career that like you like you 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 became a dad. You know what? Like uh, what? Like what year is that? Um, just at, actually, basically when Rick when Rick joined Suffo. Like about, okay. yeah, she's five and a half years now. So about six years ago. Hmm. Yeah. Halloween, actually. Halloween, six years ago. Because I can, I swear to God, I remember the night she was consummated. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I do. I do. It's like, this Some, is something, it. Yeah, something. You know, there's always nights of some bomb sex or something, but. Of course. That night, dude, something was, and, you know, I was in a gnarly part of my life, man, and fucking something hit. And then a couple of days later, you know. Fucking Whoa. something was different, and it was kind of like you know what, get a test, you know, fucking good. When I went, then I went and bought like five more, fucking make sure. Just to confirm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, dude, because I always, I always Fuck. knew, I'd be, I knew, I always knew, I always knew I'd be a bomb dad, but I had a lot. I wasn't planning on being a dad, you know. It was, like, it was in plan. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, I was like, well, here we go, get ready, you know. And it was hmm. cool getting in the tunes, and you know, when you got a. Fucking somebody at home to help, you know, with your kid so you can be away. Mm-hmm. It makes all the world of a difference, you know, because then you can still do it. And when and when they're mm-hmm. babies, like Ed Talorda told me, you know, my guitarist, he's like, just a little vessel, man, for like the first year or two. And then all of a sudden, boom, personality. And it's a little person. And you're like, oh, fuck, you know. So it was a little, it's, it's harder now to leave and go out like touring months at a time. You know, I got to, mm-hmm. I got to be here to, by example for her now if i'm gone if i'm gone and she has daddy issues dude it'll be all my fault you know yeah and as long as i'm home and she won't have daddy issues yeah that thousand percent i I can i I can i know that you know yeah so i gotta do my part and whatever you know so i'm a a feeling feeler kind of dude you know and if something doesn't feel right or whatever you know it's got to you know the legacy, legacy of our music, and legacy of our bloodline, and yeah. greatness for the rest of humanity. Man, we got to do our part to make sure we bring good people and good, solid people in this world. Yeah, because the solid people hang out with other non-so solid people, and then all of a sudden, yep. solidarity kind of yep. has a fluctuation. And yep, hope for the best. Yep, <laughs> it, it sounds like uh, becoming a dad like changed you. Uh, yeah. Big time, it, it mellowed me out a lot, you know. I re- I reflect and I'm always reflecting on myself and life, mm-hmm. but having to live for excuse me, having to live for somebody else, mm-hmm. I can't. There's I have to, you know. So many mm-hmm. times I would would do this, could do this, do that, do that, but if I feel like I'd be making her think more mm-hmm. later in life, you know, you gotta. It's we uh, our kids are an environment of like us, yeah. Basically, you know, mm-hmm. she's gonna have her own isms and whatever, but yeah. it's all example and and a product of what we show them and give them. And if I'm not here to talk to her, which I do on, constantly, you know, it sounds like it. Fucking wisdom, dude. Mm-hmm. I, you know, keep her feet on the ground and her head on her shoulders. She is in control of herself and. Everything that is around it and comes to her, and mm. if she thinks otherwise, tries to put the blame, you know, point the finger mm. at somebody else, you got freaking three more coming right, three more pointing right back at you. So you can't, you know, I gotta instill those values in her because mm-hmm. you know we're gonna have some strong females coming up, man, and we need to have them be solid. And you know, I don't got no boys, so. You know she's gonna she's gonna be my legacy coming up, and I want her to do yeah. it right and, and instill those values in her kids too. And that's yeah. I'm lucky. I'm lucky I got badass parents, man, where I can pass it on. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I think about her, it, I get choked up. Unconditional love, man. It's not yeah. it's so much different than a dog, you know, or a cat, or an animal, or or music. You know, mm-hmm. it's just. That, that that part of life and humanity that there's no question, you know, mm-hmm. that's a part of you right there. 
and it's it's pretty gnarly. When you got the news, were you uh, were you scared? Yes, totally, because I knew I really had to, you know, the the area I was in and how she was gonna come into the world, you know, fucking, yeah. I had to like, fuck, get ready. Yeah. You know, I already, I already, like my dad said, you man, make your bed, you gotta sleep in it, you know. So, yeah, fucking, I already, all right, get ready for the ride and try your best, you know. And luckily, man. you know, I got, I got such great support in my family, dude. That, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just lucky because if I was on my own, like a lot of these other people, dude, I could not imagine being on my own trying to raise a kid. And you know, yeah. I got, I got so much help. They give me me to do it, but. Mm-hmm. It's a peace of mind, especially being a musician and yeah. taking the time off to go and, mm-hmm. you know, like come out here instead of being at home doing her homework or something. Totally. You know, fucking. And I know she's safe and cool and happy. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, diff- it's a different story, man. You know? Yeah. What was it? Sound- I mean, it sounds like you had a really strong foundation as far as like, like your family. Like, what was your upbringing like? Oh, yeah. Uh, dad's in the military. Well, basically all my uncles, everybody since all the wars have always had like a military family. Really? Yeah. And uh, if I could have had long hair in the military, dude, I would have been like... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I would have I I been a badass dude in the military, man, if I could have had long hair. But you Might know. have saved your life having long hair. <laughs> oh, my goodness, but, yeah, dude. Told, yeah, skateboarding it, is a lot better than... Be, I'd rather be in the tr- in the gutters skating than in the trenches with the guns, man. I'd rather have a, yeah. I'd rather have a fucked up ankle, dude. Whatever, yeah, I know. What's yeah, up, exactly. Yeah, What's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. My goodness. But uh, nah, just good solid foundations, man, you know? And uh, I was always just my mom always playing music growing up, and my, on my mom's side, that's where the fit, the music comes in. Yeah. All my uncles were in their nineties, you know, and playing bands and writing their own music. Mm-hmm. And my mom plays piano, and uh, wow. my dad's got like the mechanics and the you know, hmm. crazy book smart freaking you know, he's a he'll, smart man. Yeah, I get. I think I look. I get some math. I get the math from him and. Wow. And I bring in the all the crazy fucking uh, pentachronics from my mom, you know? Whoa. <laughs> I got I got a patent that's still pentachronics. Do do you find that like you're actually if you you know where excuse me, if you were lucky enough to have a strong foundation of parents, do you realize that like they would actually influence uh your music and writing? I noticed that. Oh yeah, for sure. All, all the all the funk that my mom would play. You know, growing up, and then mm-hmm. all the like the old, like the uh, like the salsa and the oldies and big band that yeah. my uncles would play. Hmm. I was around music constantly, and my dad always played like 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 classic rock, but not the poppy kind of classic rock. Yeah, you know, so always surrounded around music, and I think from having the discipline, you know, it's just instilled to you know that part of life too to. You're going to practice, and you got to, you're there to work and to move forward, not just you know, like party. You know, parties like always fun at practice too, but nothing really gets done unless you're working on shit. Exactly. Okay, this will explain. This is uh, something I'm always curious about. Uh, real, real quick. So when you're, because you touched on something very like, seems small, but I'm not gonna go <laughs> over it. Yeah. Um, there's this illusion of when you're writing music or you're hanging out with your band, you know, let, let's say, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in this gorge and it's fucking 97, 98. You're writing one of those brutal records that's, that's about to come out. Yeah. And there's this illusion of what is actually happening in the room. People think you're partying, but it's actually when you're done with the day and then you start drinking and hanging out with, 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 oh, yeah. with, with the buddies. It's not before. Correct. And this order I found by talking to... Honestly, there you go. Like a lot of young, younger bands are trying to make that step of doing anything outside outside of their own town. Yeah. And I, right when I start talking, I get it. I'm like, oh, well, you, you have the order backwards. Yeah. And that, if you just change that that order from party after you're you're done with with writing for an hour, two, five hours, when when your day is done, then yeah. you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Then live the lifestyle, but you can't live the lifestyle without putting in that work first. Totally, totally. If you're lucky enough to kind of ride the wave as you go, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. be, that way you're not. Because for me, playing live or something, two beers max. Sure. Yeah. You know, 
and then oh, okay, a little warmed up, you know. But if I I cannot, I can smoke weed fucking all day, be asleep, you know. Yeah. Not even like Ben will do sound check. Not even sound check for me. He'll you know I ate some edibles one time before I went to Mexico and oh, fucking oh my god. Yeah, Mike and Trish Spratley fucking from San Diego fucking Grave Rock Productions man they. Okay, give this is very strong. It looks like a small piece of a brownie, but it's very strong. Split it up, give it to the band. Nobody wanted any, and I'm a chocoholic dude, so I'm no, no. macking that whole thing, falling no. asleep, walking across the bridge. We get to the venue, boom, pass out, and all of a sudden, the band's waking me up, signing autographs in my sleep, and then, you know, hey, I set up your gear for you. <laughs> it's time to play. I'm like, oh shit, no sound check. You're all set up. Let's go. Oh, oh wow. shit, I get up there, man, and I'm, I'm like in a day, you know, I'm doing it, pulling through, you yeah. know, this is like 99 gutted days, and I'm just like with uh, on tour with the Incantation at the time. Oh, my goodness. And I was like, oh, shit, you know, fucking about as pretty cloudy, but I was pulling through, and then finally yeah. clicked like a song and a half in, and I was like, oh, okay, here we are. Like, but if I was hammered or drinking, oh, nope. Yeah, the, the, so this, oh, yeah. yeah, it just doesn't work, you know. Does not work, so I can't even, you know, if you're on a good one, before you get to practice, hopefully your mentality is like you're going to go and do it, do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to waste somebody's time, just say, yo, you guys can work on something or can we work on something easy, my bad, sorry, or something. But luckily, mm -hmm. Discord was always just, you know, you <laughs> You know, you know, not to. We just we just were all on the same track to not do anything. You know, Ben yeah. drinks beers. I started drinking like later, just come in all lit and, you know, drink casually. But I don't, I don't really drink to get fucked up, anyways. So yeah. it's always just kind of, you know, doing it. But yeah, the people that come in and it's not gonna sound good. You're not gonna remember it. It's gonna be off. And yeah. then depending on your emotions or mentality, things could get stupid and at practice and. You know, over the years of doing it and member changes, mm -hmm. dynamics are a huge part of making something successful. Totally. You know, and it's, like you said, it's not real small, but it's actually really big. Yeah. You know, and we took, Ed was our sound guy. Ed Salorda was our sound guy on that tour. So really? that's kind of how he came into the band. Levi was, in, well, those two are like San Diego. Kid. Levi, when he moved to San Diego, they're vocalists for Parallels. Mm hmm he, uh, him and Ed, you know, you go to shows and him and Ed were, you know, hanging out and he's like, mm -hmm. dude, let's get Ed. It's a second guitar player. And I was like, oh, man, you know, I got to show somebody all this and then oh, no. he's going to write, you know, more freaking hard work and gnarliness and then another yeah. attitude in the band and our personality actually. Sure. Like, fuck, you know. And then from taking him on the road, handled his shit. I already knew he was a shredding guitar player. You know, yeah. he, he played in Mortis Terror and we played shows together and okay. I was like, dude, this guy's a monster. And he's got like 10 years on me, of, you know, 20 of playing. Like he oh, was wow. he was already playing playing thrash shows, you know, oh, back wow. in like the late 80s and 90s, dude, when I was, yeah. you know, barely coming up in the garage. Ed, Ed was already <laughs> playing. Ed was already <laughs> playing shows. That guy's fucking dope, you know? Yeah, Sick. But, you know, he had a lot of energy, especially back then. So it's kind of yeah. like, fuck, dude, how are we gonna, you know, how are we gonna do this? And then mm -hmm. we took him on the road, two weeks, and he, everything was fucking cool, man. So I was like, all right. And next thing you know, it was the best thing we could have ever done. You know? Really? Oh yeah. So yeah, because I mean, <laughs> another thing that uh, that people don't realize, like you guys were a four piece forever. That's if that's really if you even if you just look at the music and listen to it. It sounds like a fucking wall of like it's like how many guitar players do they have? Yeah, dude, was, and all those riffs. Yeah, you know they got they got buried a lot from being a four piece and really coming up coming up with underground like live show wise. Sure, because coming up back in the day, you know you play shitty shows, dude, in front of like twenty people and you're getting paid fifty bucks or whatever. Like man, you know you're playing a coffee house, dude. With just just when triggers were coming in, you know and. You either <laughs> triggers and vocals are coming out of the mic. You got your bass and guitars, nothing's mic'd, and you got, if you want to mic anything, and so all of a sudden. Oh, I see what you're saying. So frequency-wise or sound, like the wall of sound coming. It was, yeah, it was just, yep. it was. So I, I invested in two rigs. I'd have a full stack here and a full stack here next to Ben. That explains and fucking, it. And we were just like, you know, I had my Randall stack at first, and then my Marshall, and then of it course. went from my Marshall to my Mesa. And same mm -hmm. with recording was like gutted, gutted. I used Eric's eighty, Eric's rig on one track, and I used uh, my uh, my ADA on my tr on mine. 
And then on Consume, I'd use my Marshall rig and then my Mesa rig for dual guitars. And then on Parallels, Ed had his rig, and then I had my rig. So, uh, But playing live back in the day, like there's mm-hmm. so much involved with the scored stuff that, yeah. you know, there's no new value, I can't hear fucking anything. And I had my... I have my sound scooped, like. Yeah, you need, you, yeah, you know what I mean. It's this weird thing, like you want the scoop sound, but you want it, you want it, you want it present, and yeah. it's like it, almost like this impossible fucking. Yeah, thing hey, to hit. turn it up, bro. Yeah, turn it up, like it's, all, it's already at ten, you motherfucker. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know about Spinal Tap back then, so you could turn it up to eleven, you know. Oh, and and yeah. I didn't know about uh, frequencies yeah. and like equalizing, you know. It's like you can still yeah. have a dope sound and have it kind of sound ballsy without having all your mid scoop down. And totally, I feel you. You know. That probably explains why you got the two twelve, huh? Oh yeah. I remember seeing you guys so many times. Like, why does he have that? Like, what is that two twelve? Yeah, well, that was uh, Ed when he was working at Guitar Trader. He won that for like Salesman of the Month or whatever, dude. So yeah. he's like, hey, he's all, how about going up there? We got fucking uh, truck, you know, three quarter stacks. He's all less to here, and he's all, you don't get the wah wah when you're playing live from the full stack. And all, and mm-hmm. and the thing about the Gansmans, which helped our sound too, is those they have like a real punchy mid sound to them. Mm. So I had the Marshall scooped, and then like I go back and forth with my Marshall and Mesa rig depending on how expensive tubes are at the time. Cause sure, three tube in my heads, you know. Sure. But uh, going in with that with that Gens bands, eight sixteen four ohms. The back is like super compatible, and it has an out, you know, nice. to come out. But it's got a good punchy like mid to it. So yeah. You know, that's what that's what that is, man. Yeah, that's that's called that light lightweight, easy, you know, yeah. less space and you know, evolving with my ear. I was like, fuck, that's actually a really good sounding cabinet too. Can we get kind of geeky for like a few minutes? Yeah. So uh what exactly did you use for let's say for example, uh Chile Guided? Like what's like what was like your, your rig? A rig I had the uh, ADA MP two. What is that? It's a, it's a preamp, guitar preamp. Oh, it's a preamp. Yeah, like a rack preamp. Oh, okay. So it's got the little A and then a D, like it's like a black, and then it's got a blue A, D, and then A, you okay. know, the, their logo. Yeah. And then I had, from Suffo, actually, uh, when they came through, I think, after Pierced, I started seeing BBE, you know? Terrence mm-hmm. was like, dude, fucking... Get these. It's like the loudness button, you know, on your truck, you know, because it did. It had bring up the, the low contour, and then you could bring up like the sub and like a little bit of sizzle on it. Oh, yeah, BBE. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be you like, that. yeah. So they, yeah, they had that, and then the four seats, you know, evolving. That's what I had for that one first, and then I had my uh, my pedals and my EQ, and then um, like a compressor or something, and then I had my Randall. My Randall stack, I think I didn't. I think I just huh. barely got my Mace and my Marshall when we went to record. And I was going to use my Ra- my Randall cab and then my Marshall. And then Eric mm-hmm. said, hey, you know what? Just use, you know, use my rig for the other guitar track. So, one, so, you, have, so you have two separate. Yeah, two separate sounds. Okay. Instead of the same sound. So I had my sound on one, which is the ADA MP2. Then my BC Rich uh, Bitch mm-hmm. with the EMG81 in it. And then, um, then the equalizer and the BBE, and then I used the Eric's rig, which was the what is it DD something or Digitech, his Digitech preamp preamp. Okay. Uh-huh. And then Marshall and I don't know what he had for his for his power amp. That explains a lot. There's something about two completely separate guitar rigs that gives this dimension, dude. Yeah. Like you, like you don't realize it, like, but when you really like, okay, what what's what is it about that that record or song or sound? It's like, yeah, you have two different fucking sounds coming out. You do. You have yeah. this, there's like this fucking dimension to it. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I kind of got that a little bit from listening to like the early Suffo tracks or ones, mm. or even actually seeing them live. From seeing them live, you'd see like Doug, the uh, Cerrito and Hobbs had just one was a little bit more sizzle and one was a little bit dry. Oh shit, the sickest, you know. But dude. then when it comes in, and that's probably the compensating s- for the bass yeah, frequencies too. Dude. You know what I mean? Which none of us, oh, I didn't know any of that stuff until the recent years after Ed, uh-huh. you know, teaching me about it and going to the studio and being like, you know, okay, there's a little bit more of a bass frequency in there, but we wanted Ben to still be like, yeah. the, to play to play brutal 
freaking fast, heavy music and try to have it be heard, it's such a battle frequency wise. Yeah. Because Disgorge has always been about, I want to have my sound. You know, I'm not going direct and then having you reamp my guitar. What's that's not my sound. It'll mm-hmm. sound sick on the album, but when I go and play live, am I gonna have that too? Mm-hmm. You know, we're more of a live band than we were uh, as a recording band. Yeah, you know, and same thing, like same with Ben. You know, we wanted to hear some of his click, kind of like when you like in the Legion album. You know, you hear yeah. Glenn fucking digging yeah. in that shit, man, yeah, or like Glenn. Alex Webster's Alex Webster's. So no matter oh, what, same, that dude's gonna be same. heard. You know. So with mm-hmm. Ben, we're kind of like, my guitar is, my tone is so chunky and so heavy, dude, that, you know, like Ben is sometimes buried in the mix and you've got to bring it up enough to where he's heard, but then it kind of mud other stuff. It's and that's true. just, and that's just due to frequencies. So is that, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, dude. So, so this is a preamp. Yeah, right that's here. A, yeah, that was a preamp that I, I used. I've seen this before. Yeah, that's the whole. I don't even think they're around anymore. They were. Uh, Holy moly! That was a big thing back in the day. Five killer tones. Yeah, <laughs> the MP1. That's what I played first. I had the MP1 first, and then I think like six months before the gutted recording, I got the MP2. Oh, that's fucking sick. MP2. Yeah, yeah I don't know what that is. That's not. Oh yeah, that's a that's a nar. Is that the? Yeah, I don't remember having that one. I think I had the one on the left, the top left. Do you find a sick guitar preamp is so awesome? Yeah, that's the sound, I and, you, and you find your sound. Oh, you, totally. You, you just like, I mean, all these bands. Wow, dude. Yeah, I know. Super good. Yeah, but it's when I once you started touring, I dude, you go and you play, and you know, early days, you don't have like money to fly your gear out. Yeah, or, or like I was playing underground death metal, dude. You're <laughs> You don't know what you're going to run into. Oh, my you goodness. You know, I remember one show I played out of like a 12-inch practice amp, like a little Marshall practice amp, dude, with an orange, you know, distortion pedal. No. Yeah, and just my guitar and all. What'd you all, do? Fucking here we go. <laughs> Made my best and tried to, tried, tried. luckily the score just so fast that, you know, the there's not we're not relying on the chunkiness of it to, to slam our way through. We were, you know. We just had we had Ricky's bass blast back there to Oh my goodness. Okay, but it was a very it was very dry, dirty Where was this? But we had it was in Brazil. Brazil course. Yeah. We had Maddie's freaking vocals back there. You know, a little Damn. coffee house, dude. Holy moly. I know. Night before you're playing some fat like House of Blues deal. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the next day you're like well, okay. here we go. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, this is my amp from home. You know, the, I don't know what happened. We couldn't get the gear supplied today. Oh, you know. Yeah. Shut the front door. Here we go. Oh my you know? goodness, dude. What was uh, w- w- what was your rig for? Consume. Consume. That's when I got my uh, my boss, mm. my VF one. It's a VF one. Ha- yeah, it's a half rack, uh, preamp. Oh, a preamp. Yeah. A boss preamp. Yep. Okay. And, and that thing, man, I got it. Is that it? I got it. Yep. Exactly. It's, it's all, that thing is fucking... What is, that's, Dude, I've never seen that in my fucking life. That thing... What is I got, that thing? I think I got a... Uh, fuck, dude. Um, what's his name? I can't remember. The, the, the guitarist for fucking Disentuned. Okay. Not Jordan. I can't remember for the life of me. But VF1 he, boss. Yeah. Well... That thing's got amp simulators, mic simulators, speaker simulators, graphic EQ, and like, all like another kind of EQ. All kinds of. Uh, it's got it's got MIDI also, and which I don't you know I don't use, but it's got huh. fl- flange delay whatever. What? Uh, but I I play the fifty one fifty. That's the PV. The PV fifty one fifty is the one that's got the most distortion on that. Like the oh. chunks more scoopus. Interesting. Like, this is what. So, what year is this? Ooh, that was probably two thousand, I guess. Oh, two thousand. Oh, because yeah. I, I fried my gear in Brazil. What the fuck? Yeah, fried my gear. Do we went out there and uh, uh, you know the power converters? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the converter didn't work apparently up on stage. We the sound check. That will fry your shit, dude. You're, you're fucking done. It's, yep. it's gone. First sound check worked. Second sound check. Fucking turn it up. Start seeing the smoke. <laughs> you see the smoke. They classic. didn't change. They didn't change. Flip the switch after the opening band's uh, oh sound check. Goodness. So then I go up and all of a sudden sizzle. So when I came home, I had to look for a new one, and that was shit. Back in two thousand, that thing was like five five fifteen used. 
And, wow. and I've bought two since then. I've had to go on like eBay online to yeah, find I just, it. Yeah, you got you got to stock them up at this point. Well, dude, preamps now are like three five grand. You know, and get this, a car for. I mean, granted, my gear lasts me for twenty was, years. And this, look at. I mean, this is this is kind of geeky stuff. But I'm look, telling you, look at this picture. Just year two thousand. Yep. And now we're so used to the Axe FX and Kempers. This is a very similar. Yeah. Picture here. Yeah, man. And I don't even know about ninety percent of that fuck? stuff. All the capabilities of that thing, dude, I have no idea. I just, oh, this might sound good. That might sound good. What is this? What is that? You wow. Know? Yeah, that's dope. And you can have uh, your your name, like, you know, of written course. on the screen. So I started by put Discourage on there. Yeah. When I wait in. And then now, after, you know, after like the 20th hiatus with Discourage, I put DA Gorge on there. So it's just my sound instead of the Discord sound. Well, you have your own sound. Yeah. And you I have shut a, that shit out after a while. Yeah, do you fucking? I mean, you have you know, you know your my sound. We're saying, but you are Diego Sanchez. You're, you have your own yeah. sound, and you fucking you know create a you know span of you know fucking over twenty five years. You know. Yeah, so, dude, it's pretty rad too. Because when, when it comes on, you're like, oh, okay. I reckon you know. Yeah. Recognize that tone. Recognize that tone or that song or something, man. Mm-hmm. Somebody today, or actually yesterday. So what band was he doing the podcast on? I was like, you know what? That was never discussed. I was like, I'm assuming just the Scourge because that's my legacy, you know? Sure. But I was like, TVV's been doing some stuff and stuff yeah. the see recently. I was yeah. like, and then, you know, I'm always talking about my solo stuff, but. Of course, yeah. What's It's kind of like, you know, I was like, I don't even know, man. They're just, we're just going to go rap out. Me either. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I've learned through this thing. Dude, like, I mean, I put loose notes and let the conversation have its way. Yeah. You for know, sure, yeah. it's just, I kind of stopped like this. Trying to force a conversation, I'm like uh, I have my notes, I do the research, and just let it flow, and yeah. just let it have. It's, it's like it's like a rip for a song. Oh, totally, dude. Get out of your own way, dude. Yeah, totally. And just let it happen. Yep. You know, I was asked, "What time are you coming home tonight?" I don't know. <laughs> this is, you know, this is. It's just like going to practice right. when you're writing. Mm-hmm. I, dude, I miss so many Thanksgivings, Christmas, dude. birthday parties. Yeah. Going. Well, what happened? Either you're getting ready for tour, and you have to muscle it up and play the set twice, or. Mm. You just in writing zone and you're like, well, mm-hmm. fucking, I thought I was gonna be there for two or three hours too, and next thing you know, yeah, six, seven yeah, hours, I come home, fucking two, three o'clock in the morning, and you're like, yeah. wow, well, what am I gonna, you know? Dude, yeah. I was in the doghouse. Don't wait your time. Now I, I could give a fucking flying pig, dude. When you know who's gonna tell me when to stop doing my music, regardless of what it is. Totally. Just like it's only a podcast. It should be two or three hours. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm fucking, you know, I met you already. So I was yeah. like, dude, I'm number one is number one is music. Who knows? I was like, but this guy's freaking awesome. So I'm just going to go and hang out. Oh, we're, man. You know, appreciate that, Diego. Cool. Holy moly, you know, dude. Yeah, dude. You got a rad vibe. So, oh, man. Honor, know, dude. Holy I'm not gonna, moly. I'm not going to put a, a shut off on what time I got to, you know, this is us. You know, yeah. our, our musicianship, dude, and our mm-hmm. vibe, and just like whatever you put out through Suicide Silence and then your other projects, dude, like, and this, you know, you got a great crew working with you. These guys seem hella fucking rad. And, you know, you don't, what are you going to limit your vibe to, you know? Yeah. Fucking, it was that Drake, bitch don't kill my vibe or something, you know? Yeah. Fucking, yeah, he's got that shit down. Fucking. It sounds like you listen to a lot of Hip hop. Oh well, yeah, man. Car- we so talk- so far we talked about Car- Cardi B <laughs> and, uh, and Drake and Freestyle Fellowship. Don't forget those guys. Okay. okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, well, I was a I used to break dance man as a kid in the eighties. Are you serious? Yeah. Before metal, fucking it was you know metal wasn't even like you know besides for punk, obviously old school punk. But I used to Diego. Time I used to out. break dance, bro. Time out. What <laughs> year were you break dancing? Uh, eighty. 80, 82, probably 82 to 83 or 4. Oh, you're a kid. You're, you're, uh, you're Yeah. Oh, my brother's seven years older. Yeah. So I was like that fucking second grader battling fifth and sixth graders. Because my brother would come home and show me routines. So I'd go to school with a cardboard dude and be all lined up, be like, Whoa. you know? My, my head spin was my execution move. Dude, that shit looks hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, I'm athletic, luckily. You earned it. Yeah. So you do your practice and, you know, I blew out my knee a couple of times thinking I was badass trying to do it on like raw asphalt when you start. Oh, shit. You know, your feet get your feet stick to asphalt. Yeah. So when you go to try to do some crazy freaking breaking move, man. That, <laughs> yeah. That's what? Oh, I know, dude. I tell you what. Almost like skateboarding, dude. That shit's so good. Did you have that outfit? Come on. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Are you serious? Yeah, I had the Adidas stripes, dude. I used to check on my laces, dude, and overlay. Yeah, see? Bam, get that wow. shit down. Do the 1990, the fucking Whirly World, man. Fucking all that oh, shit. How, how old were you? Oh, uh, dude, I was like six to eight or nine years old. Wow. Yeah. Oh, see, oh, man, there's my homeboy, freaking Fuentes, right there. Oh. You know him. No, but oh, so, oh my <laughs> well, no, my, one of my buddies is a hip hop artist known since school. Okay, Frankie Fadeless, and uh, you know him and I would be like the older breaker guys in, yeah. the, in the crew, you know. But he's wow. he's got floor routine way more tight than I do, you know. That's tight. Ever since I had a little knee stick one time, on nope, ain't going to do all that. I'll do like done. a quick quick pop. I'll go to the ground real quick, and then I'm done. I you know it's kind of like skateboarding. I don't. Yeah. yeah, it feels like a limitation. You know, you go to do something and. You're limited at your full ability, so it's not mm-hmm. even fun or it breaks your heart to not fulfill it. You know? Totally. Dude, you went from breakdancing as a, a, a kid, a child, yeah. to you know, go with a teenager, you're skateboarding. Yeah. Actually, you're, it sounds like you were sick because you got sponsors, correct? Well, yeah, sponsored by a couple of shops, dude. That's pretty insane. Yeah. It was, I mean, they're, you know, they're giving the kids like 50, 80%. Off or whatever, you know, but that's a big deal. As a kid, like, what? that's a big deal. I'm sorry, I'm sponsored, but, but that's you a, know, but that's a big deal when you, when you're a teenager, dude. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. Your mom's breaking her back to give you forty dollars shoes, and then a week later, you need a new pair of shoes because you're shredding so hard, you know. Wow. Say, so, well, you know, well, that's why actually it was Payless shoes, and then I got bumped up to the forty dollars shoes as opposed to the ten dollars shoes because dude, it lasts it lasts me about another two weeks, then like Damn. three days. Three days, I go to those Payless shoes and like three days dude wow uh, yeah it sounds like when you when you go into something you're like you're in it oh yeah 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 thousand percent man that's it thousand percent yeah so, i mean it's really the only way to do it i mean much of anything you yeah. gotta <clears throat> you gotta do it you know yeah. I put all of myself into you know your 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 chosen path yep and when you know why you do it there that's the better reason just mm-hmm. like playing music i always thought i was gifted because of the, the genetics, the bloodline, the example mm-hmm. and exposure, you know, mm-hmm. my brother take me to shows at a young age and Sick. being around it since I was a kid with all the jazz and salsa type of stuff and no. big band. And then uh, after Ben passed away, mm-hmm. doing, st- doing To Violently Vomit, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, I love Ricky and we're fucking bros, you know, yeah. but members and bands have their shit. Sure. When he said, I'm taking the name, I'm moving away. I was like, okay, you take the name, I'll take the music. Mm. You know, what? So yeah, man, fucking, you know, try to find a guitar machine to play my riffs. Ain't gonna happen. Nowadays man. with Guitar Pro, if it's actually notated right, yeah. he could do it all day long. You know, but, but back then, 2006, man. I was like, I'll get a drum machine if I have to. You know, me and Ben will fucking keep jamming. Man. And then I did, then I couldn't play for a couple years. I'd cry every time I played, you know, so after Ben passed away. Mm-hmm. And then uh started doing To Violently Vomit, and then... Freaking Mountains of Death, bro. Mm-hmm. Sold out a merch in like five, ten minutes. Nothing but love. Played after internal bleeding and fucking defeated stans- sanity and like right before decapitated. Fucking Damn. super dope slot. And everybody said, you know. There, there you are right there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> With the fucking march from 2 by 12 in the background, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, this is your, you know, it's just, it's just music. You know, it's Damn. just music, dude. And people that people that want it, dude, they would just want to hear it. You know, and fucking, you know, and me and Rick, dude, I love that guy. You know, we fucking hang out and talk music fucking all day long. You know, you guys have a lot of history, man. It's tough, like to, it's just, you... yeah. I started a tribute band to myself, dude, so I could play the music. Never mind mm. the name and members and the record label and politics and management yeah. and shit dude. unfortunately like, that there is a there is a that that is a factor yeah unfortunately. once you get you know not more money more problems but the bigger you get the more there's a lot more involved there is a lot more involved unfortunately yeah. you know right when you think like oh when you get bigger or any any faster you think like it should be getting easier but actually it's yeah. the complete opposite and that's so fucked up and it seems like that that's a commonality with all genres of music Totally. So, so weird. Yeah. Unless you got your you own know? fucking unless you're unless you're the one that can physically take the lid off the cookie jar. Mm-hmm. You know, you're getting you're getting your hands in it with everybody else and try you know, mm. pick a pick a ticket to see who's coming out first. Just like, you know, when Discord started doing, you know, doing bigger tours, hey, can you get us to open up for you guys? And I always thought it was gonna be easy. Hey, just ask these dudes if you can open up, you know? 
Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You still got to go to the politics to yeah. or talk to the right person, it's you know, right person, to, to yeah. open up and it comes in. And I was like, dude, what are you talking yeah. about? You're coming yeah. through the town. We're right here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. My goodness. Do you, uh, I wasn't, uh, to be honest, Diego, I wasn't planning to ask you this, uh, but it's, it's crossing my mind. I have to. Is, uh, uh, I mean, are you talking to Ricky about maybe perhaps doing anything? Oh, all the time. Yeah, we talk to, we fucking, you know, every other conversation is crying, talk about how much we love playing music and love the band and everything. But, you know, it's a lot of work, man. I don't blame that guy running running a marathon behind the kit and having to build it all up and, yeah. you know, taking it, you know, and as busy as Suffo is, it's like, yeah. you know, I always tell him, I, <laughs> I'm playing the songs real. I know him. I don't have to relearn them and... You know, I couldn't imagine yeah. not playing Discord on drums even, like, just for me on guitar. You know, it's like coming back and relearning it, but it's not it's not off the table. Great. You know, I, I got songs written that he helped me, that we jammed with back in the day before fucking our last hiatus. So, you know. But I'm See? not gonna I'm not gonna give him the easy way out to have some, <laughs> somebody else play his drums, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I work my ass off to play this shit too, man, you know? Yeah, man, you guys work your fucking ass yeah, off. Yeah, and dude. like we talked about it earlier, dude, you know, there's a lot of dudes that fill Ricky's shoes, but he's got his own sound. Just like That's there's the thing. Just like fucking, you know, out of the guitarist that you know, that we jammed with, fucking Ed as we both come come from a very hard thrash background. Yeah. So he gets the essence of disgorge in my writing you know and from us tabbing stuff out together and me learning his way and him learning my way you know because mm-hmm. me and ben wrote and tat and like learned music a certain way with each other yeah and then when i got together with ed it was kind of like well, okay well, this is notation you know mm-hmm. and i'm all well, okay you know okay well this is how the rhythms broke down and he's like that doesn't work you know, it has uh-huh. to fall in this and this and this. And I'm like, well, that ain't, that's how I wrote it. I know what to tell you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Figure out the timing, you know what I mean? Oh, my god. And uh, so after like a year of trying to fit, not button heads, but, sure. you know, learning a new system and working together, you know, he caught my vibe, I caught his. But playing-wise, it's got a rad essence to it. But it's, you yeah. know, I still got my own. Yeah. And, and just like Ricky, man, he's got his own sound. I can't tell you how many shows... Growing up, that we'd be playing, and he'd be sitting on like a milk crate or a five gallon bucket as it's thrown, and he sounded like, like he was like fucking Charlie Benante back there, Whoa. just fucking hitting it, dude. And minus the toms, you know, just fucking killing it, you know. Wow. But he's he's just he's got and for the fans, you know. I yeah, think, I, think dude. I think the fans like they really want to see him fucking. Every, every, anybody deserves to see Rick play drums. He's a fucking, he's a badass fucking drummer, dude, and he's rad to look at when he's playing, and he mm-hmm. he puts more than he fucking has into his playing when he is playing his drums. You know, a lot of people, they get into it, and they'll hold, you know, but he's just, even if he's not into it, he's still putting fucking everything he has into it. Yeah, it's that unspoken energy. Yeah. Like, there he is, dude. Look at that dude, man. <laughs> so you can just, choking me up, gun, choking dude. me up right now, too, man. The essence of Disgorge, dude. If it wasn't for Tony and fucking Brian and Ricky starting this shit, who knows? I could still be having it in my head, just, you know? But something lined us up, and me and Rick are fucking, we're bros, man. You're just, yeah. I you, love that, dude. If you have any music out there, man, I mean, you're just bonded for, for life, really. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're always going to have that, that, that deep connection until D guys die, essentially, you know? Yep. It's, and then nowadays, like back in the day, it was just trading with le- with letters that's how you heard about bands besides from mtv mm-hmm. you know tape trading fucking writing letter trading Sick. maybe you get a video from somebody you know yeah. if, it, if it if the video didn't get wiped out from going through the x-ray scans oh you know my i sent you the whole, all the videos well they're fucking blank to me motherfucker well and then as you get oh, older and wow. experience that the x-ray is fucking <laughs> wiped the motherfuckers out holy moly yeah dude yeah we got travis had our uh Travis Ryan, he has the strangulation reels, and I think fucking those things are basically blank. Oh. You know, if we ever we're, we so got our we got our demo tape, we're gonna we'll we'll co-release our demo or something someday. You know, we've talked about it. That be that be great. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah, he's especially he, now. Yeah, that's yeah, a it's, it's funny, dude. Any rare it's, death metal, dude. I, I mean, come on, <laughs> come on. I know, yeah, exactly. People are on it, man. Yeah, yeah it's super fun. Well, Diego, I know you were busy, and you were. Uh, you, you mentioned that you were. Uh, you said you've been in a studio over the past few 
weekends working yeah. on, on on your project. So 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 what have you been working on? Uh, lately, it's been a cephalotropy album. Uh, I play Great. bass for those dudes, mm-hmm. so we're getting a lot of pre-production done, getting Sick. ready to record it. All the songs are are written and just everybody tightening up on their stuff. And I'm doing some vocals, you know, with Angel getting in there. You know, nice. That guy, <laughs> Angel Ochoa, man. If you guys don't know, he's a raddest dude. Rad you know, dude. He's a, yeah, if you, you know, he's just got a certain brightness and a rad energy to him. You know, so when yeah. you go to go, uh, you know, do some vocal tracks or something, you know, because as a vocal, you know, vocalists, you know, some of them that to, he'll play instruments too, but it's still, you know, some of them they can't find a certain like f- they don't know what the vibe or the flow is of the rhythm, mm-hmm. if there's a technical part or whatever. So, you know, the guitarist can go in there and say, "All right, fucking, you know, this is this is how I feel the flow or the rhythm is." Or the drummer could say, "This is accent on this." Like Ricky would, Ricky mm-hmm. and I would both do that. Accent me on this part. Ricky would say, "Follow the drums," or I'd say, "Follow the guitar." Yeah. And then so for Steph Lachesi, there's a couple parts where Angel's like, "Wiz, this shit's messing with me." You know, I don't really know what to throw down on this. You know, I'm not like huh. I'm not feeling it like you guys are feeling it. And mm. For like a lot of Discord stuff, like you know, gutted. I wrote a lot of those lyrics, and then mm. pa- consume. I came up with a lot of song titles, and then parallels came up with a lot of song titles and actually like lyrical placement. You know, because Levi mm. Levi couldn't figure out where to put yeah. vocals on a lot of the parts, and I was like, shit, we got a fucking lyrics, dude. I'll take that home, and Whoa. you know, one night I got like three 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 songs placed. You know, just with all the vocals with the certain rhythms and yeah. the cadences and stuff. And, you know, it's a rad feeling, man, because, you know, I feel the music a certain way. And then when you can show it to somebody else and then they Mm -hmm. either branch off of it and, you know, give them a little skeleton to work off of and they do it. Mm -hmm. Or they just say, wow, I really like how you do it, you know. And there was a couple of rhythms where Angel was like, you know what, I just want you to have your own vocals in that part. Never mind doing backing vocals or a little accent here and there. I think you should just sing that whole part. Wow, I was all fuck, all right, you know. Sick. Yeah, I know, pretty rad, huh? I was like, yeah, I was like, well, how about you know? Because my vocals are real, uh, volume wise, are real low. Yeah. So depending on what venue we're playing, and if the sound guy is not right, you'll be hearing feedback the whole time, or you won't even hear me. I'll go up there. You know. We need a compressor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. So yeah. it's just fun going in there and doing vocals and placing and knowing your music that well. You know, I'll be like, okay, no. no. Mm-hmm. You know, the hi-hats, you know, you should have been hitting this here, yeah. hitting that there, this and this. It's, you know, the evolutions of a sick. How do you, uh, how do you yeah. write lyrics, dude? Oh, man, I don't, I haven't written lyrics forever. Like, I, for my solo project, I, you know, get in a hard place sometimes, and you just kind of need to write in order to vent it out. Yeah. And that's just kind of like, I don't know, I did a lot of poetry when I was younger. Really? Yeah. So I kind of like knowing words and phrases and... You know, I got overwhelmed doing oh. the strangulation stuff and like disgorge lyrics to where it's kind of, you know, not, really? not trying to sound the same and this yeah. and that. It's like certain things it's just not worth stressing out on, you know. Let mm. the vocalist come up with the stuff. That's his. I write the rhythms. He can write the lyrics or something, yeah. you know. Enough time. I'm, I don't have all the time on my plate, like, you know. It's all time, I, dude. It's all time, I swear Jeez, to God, dude. I dude. wish I time and energy, man, you know. That's all. This is all just fucking this, this yeah. life is you're trying to put time and energy into it dude. yeah for real back oh. back in the day it's like we'd feel strangulation would find real cases like dateline or something yeah we'd take a story off of that okay. and just do our version off of it because it was real it was mm-hmm. like true life stories yeah you know it'll be easier to go off of after that and then interesting with this stuff i don't know angel just puts himself in a you know, stuff philosophy is kind of like a lot of like futuristic you know Futuristic kind of vibes, like human and robots, yeah. you know, kind of coming around and gore, of course. Yeah, you gotta throw it in there, dude. Yeah, have you know, to. You know? have to, man. Come on, what's up? Yeah, I know. How are you gonna Come do? How are, you, how are you gonna do gutturals without fucking blood and gore? You and, gotta you do know? it, dude. You gotta yeah. do it. How old were you when you started writing like poetry? I mean, this sounds. Dude, I was like chasing a cat in like fourth grade and stuff. Fourth, fourth grade. grade. Yeah, trying to do romance letters and. No. Telling, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's... <laughs> you know the little Valentine's cards that you get, you know, in school. Like, you know, here's the candies, the little envelopes to pass out to school yeah. and everything. And there'd always be just one, two, or three, dude, and just be all, uh, you know, this and that. And yeah, I don't know. Think of my mom said I get it from my grandpa. Really? Yeah. I don't play no romantico music on my guitar, pero. 
I'll get the <laughs> I'll, I'll write it down somewhere else. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's a that's a skill, Diego, and that's a very uh, it's also a very introspective skill as well. Yeah, you know, totally, like, totally. My brother was a good writer too, man. So we'd mm. just sit there and write lyrics. Yeah, my grandma's kitchen Damn. table back in the day, just basically like a like a you know like a horror movie, but. Mm-hmm. It, you know, got the thesaurus and the fucking dictionary right here, knowing what you're saying, how you're oh. going about it. This sounds corny. Is it real or even saying okay. the right thing in context? And Dang. you know, okay, yeah, that's how. Dude, we got some badass lyrics, dude. I tell you, that strangulation album ever comes out, you feel like fucking, Damn, of you know, course. yeah, because uh, a lot of the lyrics in uh, Sheila Gutted, you know, were written by my brother, but to you know, to discourageize it, we kind of. Hmm. You know, cut, cut and paste different things and everything. But yeah, it's pretty badass, dude. It is. And speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of lyrics and on our record, Jay, can you pull up Sheila Gutted? I, we we need to evaluate and talk about this cover. Uh, what? Okay, what? John Zig, bro. Who who came up with this cover, man? Hey, Jay, oh, come man. Go on, man. You know what? what? Who, we came were... up, who, who came up with this cover? So. The I'm pretty sure the band did, but I think Zig's vision is way sicker than we could have. So he's an artist ever imagined. Yeah, John Zig out of Austin, Texas. He's a oh, wow. tattoo artist and uh, and a artist like painter. You know, he does all kinds of paints and drawings and everything, oh. charcoal, acrylic, like anything. He's done a lot of early Unique Leader bands. He was basically mm. anything out of Texas, like. Uh, Okay. God, who was it? Uh, Corpse Crystal Records, you know, yeah. Zig was, Zig with Paimia, Disavowed, like, Zig is the artist. There is a similarity. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there's a similar, there is a, yeah, a similarity in the style of the art. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's funny, yeah, you, you look at, like, a, you, you see, like, the Paimia record. Oh, what's that, a serial? Cerebral serial. Yeah, I mean, like, like yeah. Yeah, there is a similarity. There. Yeah, that oh, was wow. that whole, all the, the Deeds albums, Mark oh, of the Lead, all the Deeds shit. albums, basically, up until... I think after there it is dude boom yeah cerebral wow yeah he's a super nice guy too man yeah yep but uh discourage they all have besides for the first album you know besides for cranial i wasn't really there you know for the lyric and writing of all that stuff yeah. but for gutted strangulation already had their version of like lyrics and the artwork that's just but, fucking <laughs> but then, that is insane but then we gave it to zig you know, if you, I mean, I hate to say this to everybody, but that's actually the Virgin Mary laying there. I'll get it. If you look at the symbols on her robe. Oh, I never knew that. And then the, that's baby Jesus, the baby, because you see how the head is like spirit. Oh. You know? So she's on the steps of a Catholic church. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I it, it, I was like it was already dark and it got way darker. Oh yeah, holy, dude, Zig's, yeah, Zig fucking is, moly. Yeah, Zig. When he came to us with that, we were like, what? Way sicker. Because I've had, like I said, we had strangulation out before that, and that was just like some lady in a dutch she lay gutted, you know, she's all gutted, and sure, in a dungeon, baby, chipping down, kind of you know, butcher up birthdays, you know. Yep, yep. And all all of a sudden, man, freaking Zig sent us this, and we were. Pfft. Yeah, these are artists. That's for Dash. And then the inlay, that'll make more sense. You've seen the inlay of... I haven't seen the inlay, uh, surprisingly, no. Oh, yeah. The inlay is the the pre... Like, you'll see the, the different version of... I never, uh, I never knew that. Like, that concept was that deep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go on the vinyl. F- fifth one to the right. Oh, okay. Yep. That's the Virgin Mary. Uh-huh. And is that so Jesus the, in her hand right there? Yep. Oh little my, creature. My goodness. <laughs> this gorgeous is so here this, to stay forever, dude. This, that was basically like a uh, anti, you know, we're all, none of us are, I think Ben was kind of borderline atheist, you know. Of course. But he's a, you know, still, we're all, we're all good dudes. It ain't nothing about Satanism or nothing like that. Yep. So, but this album was basically about wow. like anti-Catholicism basically because that was, you know, it was kind of like uh, after Glenn came out just destroying everything with Legion, you know, like, yeah. dude, how are you gonna, how, how are you gonna top that? Yeah. You know what I mean, dude? Holy Most moly. pissed off gnarliness. So then, consume the Forsaken, like the second the Apostles, like he, he, all the songs are make, mean different things. Yeah. So consume was 
about the, it was a story basically about the apostles turning on Christ. Mm. So divine suffering is them consuming the forsaken and demise of the Trinity, and then perverse manifestations. That's them coming up with all these ideas of, oh no, you know? Huh. Fucking, first we dealt with the Catholicism, now yeah. it's the Christianity. And then that's how I come up with a lot of the assigned titles because we just brainstorm idea, like a concept, I guess, yeah. ideas. And then for parallels, it's kind of like, okay, we talked about Catholicism, we talked about Christianity. So I was like, okay, parallels of infinite torture, that's what do I believe? You oh. know, do I believe in religion? Do I not believe in religion? Revealed in obscurity, that's when you're, what do I believe in? You know? Yeah. And then uh, and throwing abominations, that's kind of like putting your ideas into place of, do I believe in this? Do I believe in that? Descending upon convulsive devourments, that's basically mm. the swarm and all that, of that, of what you see there. Yeah. And then... Uh, that, that's crazy. Then later, well. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it's basically just a story freaking continuing on. Wow. And then Ricky got into... Here we go. Uh, Sumer- <laughs> same, same, same artist, dude, for all of our artwork. So same far. artist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, then, uh, so yeah, he, uh, yeah, dude, super good. Yeah, Zig's dope, dude. That's why I had, I got, I had the artwork tattooed on me. Oh my goodness. Before, before the album came out, man, he came to San Diego, and I was like, "Hey, can you dude. put that on me before it's released?" He's like, "Hell yeah!" Whoa. So I can got this, and I got to consume the Forsaken stuff. And you hear a little bit of the gutted creatures, you know? Oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's I, like... Dude, I didn't know there was this whole concept with Discord. It's why I was so curious about asking about the artwork, because it really hasn't been explained, really. Yeah. I, I never knew that like, like the concepts were so well thought out. Yeah, totally, man. We're... Um, yeah, we're... That explains th- a lot about, about you guys. Yeah, we're thinkers, for sure. That's an evil fucking. Right. Th- man, that that's just evil. Yeah. Cause you know forsaken. Yeah. And the, he already had that drawing. We were just like, oh, dude, that's the darkest that of uh, of all that you. Cause we were just visiting him, mm-hmm. you know, on on tour, and he was like, yeah, just flowing through art. And I was like, you know, cause all the alien creatures, man. I was all, you know, we're like, I'm a huge like aliens predator kind of like yeah. sci-fi kind of guy. So I was like, yeah. oh, that's sick. And then how dark it is, and the red, and you know. And then his inlay, you know, the inlays that he has on it is just like Geiger influence and it's just like, you know, like mm. pipe works and mechanics and Dude. Yeah, yeah. See, I got that on my ankle. Wow. It's got the little creatures in there. Super good, dude. Do you have uh are the inlays first of all, are these are these records on vinyl? Uh yeah, I think so. Only vinyl I have is the Shilly Gutted one. Really? Yeah. Do you don't have consume on vinyl? I don't got consume on vinyl. I don't got parallels on vinyl. I think somebody's, you know, yeah. Oh, there's my. a lot of there's a lot of political stuff oh, there. Of course, you know? of course. So somebody somebody had the rights and signed them off, but I never saw. What the fuck, dude? I know, Cause, rad, huh? Because you could do like with that with the layout that detailed and thought out. I mean, it was so oh. cool to have it. This like, oh yeah, have it big time. You no, know? yeah, I'll probably fuck. I'll do it myself someday. I'll just that'd be great. Tweak it out a little bit. That way I can have a copy of my own. Yeah, dude. <laughs> with, with layouts like that, dude, you got to have them. Yeah. Hell oh, yeah, bro. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Shilly Gutted ones at first, dude, you need, I think Eric licensed it to somebody. Displeased Records, I think it was. Displeased. And we got uh, 50, like for you need, you need leader and the band. 50? Yeah, total. So that first, that first pressing, there's only 50 of them made. What? Yeah, the band got five each, and then I think Eric got the rest. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we got 20, and he got 30. Dude, that's... Oh, my gosh, dude. I know. Imagine now how many are out there. I see them on eBay and posts all the time. Hey, anybody got an extra one? (laughs) I'll pay for shipping. (laughs) And I have, I'll, I'll pay for shipping, you fuck. <laughs> I'll send you a shirt if you send me the vinyl. <laughs> My name's on it, you fucking bitch. <laughs> dude, I had, I had one kid, dude. Uh, you know, because I only had five. So select people I gave them to, you know. I still got one myself. Yeah. And uh, actually, I used to have two. And then years ago, I was hanging out with somebody. And the, uh, I think the 
boy was he was some dude was like up and coming trying to do a dj and stuff and mm -hmm. like when he saw the when he heard me like i brought the record to the house party when i was like yeah dude got a record yeah. fucking dope you know mm -hmm. he's like what he's all no way he's all hook me up man i'll fucking bring that into the set you know and he used the the shilly gutted uh outro no the in the intro mm -hmm. yeah using it dude to come in and splice and stuff and he used to, and i went to one of his shows one time and he'd be Sick. Like, you know to come out, you know, oh, and, yeah. I, and I was like, oh, that's dude. fucking evil, dude. Devour the enemy. Oh. And all of a sudden, if you'll, yeah, yeah. as soon as the cards start coming in, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, classic, dude. It's Just, a classic record, yeah. man. Too, too gnarly to be able to play the music that you play, Diego, and to be able to look back on your, your life and your career, and it's still going as well, like, be like. You have a classic records on on your belt. Not many people Dude. that play this music can can say that. Oh yeah, for sure. All the artwork, man. I've had, man, like a funny story with the Sheila Gutted. My buddy's wife was, you know, a big Christian chick, and she had already been rapping out at me for like a while. And I was in her house, and just started working for this guy. You know, after work, go upstairs, yeah. drink a beer, or whatever. Of course. Go home. Oh, you're a really nice guy. You play in a reggae band. Now he plays in a death metal band. Here, mm. here's a CD. Get out of my house right now. What oh. the heck is that? She lay gutted. I'm not having that, you know? Fucking what, lady? You know? Whoa. Crazy. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, sure. he was like, no, he ain't. Go. It's art, you know? Kick back. You know, he's not fucking going out there burning churches or nothing. Dude, why is it that? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> why is it that people that play death metal are the most chill? Why is that? Could we get it out? I. That was my first thought. Yeah, subconsciously or frequency wise or spiritually, do we just, just get it out? Just get it out, you know. But it, amazingly enough, in the brutal world, you know, I think I noticed like when we first started touring, mm -hmm. you know who your rock stars are, you know who the ones aren't like the cool guys, you know. Sure. But nine times out of ten, all the brutal death guys were just the most humble, fucking nicest guys, man. I would trip out, you know, especially Suffo, yeah. dude. You know, Doug Bones. Walk, cruising through the parking lot at uh, Showcase Theater, you know, for the Pierce One of the Din days. Damn. Anybody got KGB? You know, and he's walking in his skibbies, dude, with his shaved head. And I was like, you some fucking Nazi or something, dude? Aren't you playing for Suffo? You know, and he's all, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck are you saying KGB for? You know, you got fucking, you know, you got Hobbs in there, dude. What's going on? And he's all, killer green bud, man. I'm, you know, fucking from New York. And I was like, oh, oh I got so fucking chronic, you know. Hey, that was back when Dr. J's chronic swing. So I was like, I got some yeah. chronic for you, bro. Fucking, yeah, I don't know about KGB. Wow. But, dude, and then hanging out with those guys, Chris Richard, just like, come on back, man. Let's come meet the guys. Let's hang out. And then next yeah. night, you know, go to San Diego, cruising cruising around, get a Cerrito, a bong down at Mission Beach, and just mm -hmm. driving around the town. My brother's rapping out at Frank because they're both, like, you know, sewer guys working for collections and stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Jesus. Like, the, you know, like, you know, stuff was like the gnarliest, you know, for that era, dude. They were like, you know, nobody could be as heavy as those dudes were, you know. Maybe there might have been some dark like, Satan, you know, sledging motherfuckers, but stuff I was like, you know, they're punching, dude. They're hitting hard and heavy, and they were the nicest, funnest guys, man. And like, level, you know, grounded, just hanging out. Like, That's easy, so bizarre, huh? Easy conversations, man. Yeah. Trip out just like Guy, Guy Marche and Chris Pervelis, dude. When mm. when Guy was in uh, internal bleeding back in the day, you know, you show up late to a festival because you get jacked at customs, and all of a sudden they're like, "Play our gear, take our slot." You know, you guys can still play. We'll play before you instead of headlining. Damn. And you're like, "What, dude? Like, I'm up. playing your gear and you're That's training your slot." You know, we were that was still like Sheila Gutted days, dude. That wasn't even yeah. Our caliper, but yet we were bumping in internal bleeding demos, dude, at like fucking 16 years yeah. old, you know? So it was kind of rad, you know? And then Guy's always been, he's just always been hella cool. I look Guy's at always been really cool. Yeah, you know? So it was, uh, yeah, man, it's a trip. The most brutal heads. And then when you introduce our musician friends to people that aren't metal, mm -hmm. they're all, they say the same thing. Oh, God, these are the, the nicest guys. Yeah. You know, how how do they play such crazy, gnarly, scary music? And they're the nicest guys, you know? From doing construction and building houses, I can't tell you how many times I have people think I play in a reggae band. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got the beard. 
probably smell like weed when I go in there. So they're like, you know, fucking, oh, he's a musician. Wow. He's playing a reggae band or something. No, he actually plays in brutal death metal. <laughs> 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 what? Let me show you this yeah. record. Real, oh, real, oh, yeah, real dude. Real I'll, I'll go in there. I'll, you know, nowadays, just pull up YouTube real quick. And yeah. it's like, you know. Funny. Nine times out of ten, I'll pull up like Mountains of Death or something, and nice. they can they can see my interview. So hey, Diego Sanchez, thank you for coming, of everybody, course. and also yeah, you know, fuck, dude. <laughs> that is sick, man. Yeah, dude, it's too funny, super fun, super fun. Wow, dude. Well, any uh, so you, so you have the project mm. you're working on now. Uh, is there is there any plans for for that? Uh, well, we got a bunch of shows coming up. Okay. Yeah, we're doing El Salvador and Costa Rica. Oh my gosh. And Colombia. We're playing uh Texas and Corpus Christi coming up in March. Both both all that's in March actually. And then um we're doing LA, San Diego, San Diego like February twenty fourth or twenty sixth or something like that. Mm-hmm. Then we got LA coming up and then um with to violently vomit, going back to Colombia in July. Me, Joseph and Soria and Angel gonna go do that. Whoa. So and then, yeah, hopefully I can get some more booked for TVV because I'm missing my guitar. It's been, I've been working on bass, dude, getting prepping for recording. Yeah, but yeah. I'm getting the freaking itch, dude, so bad yes. to play, you know? Yeah. Got to, you know, I'm yeah. just playing the bass, still kind of learning. Like, I'm not a bass player yet, you know, so I'm just a guy that plays bass and just, mm. you know, doing it. But I need, I, I, you know, you get hungry to just pick up what you know. Yeah. And I know that when I fucking do it or give it i'm only gonna i'm only gonna be i'm only gonna feel it and put everything into it and it's just gonna freaking be amazing you know or i'm gonna get all analytical and fucking start writing like a whole new album yeah, dude. <laughs> you're that hungry where you're like i know it. I'm, yeah. I'm craving my guitar you know and i haven't played it for a while you know the juggle of a dad a bass player and mm-hmm. work and family shit and then you know family's amazing but dynamics as you get older yeah it's tough. Fucking gnarly, dude. You know your per- your perspective changes. So mm. you know, and unless you're on tour the whole time, just going and playing music when you're at home, you know, you got to deal with shit a lot more. It's true. So uh, I can't uh, I can't wait to. I know when I pick up my guitar, dude, I'm gonna and tell me I'm gonna anticipate that it's gonna be about 20, 30 minutes, and I'm probably gonna play that motherfucker for about three or four hours. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> After so many years, you still have an itch to. To play, it's oh, badass, man. Oh, totally. And I miss. I mean, you know, like I said before, I always I had the scores material in my head. I just mm-hmm. wasn't good enough to play it. You know, I'd hear the rhythm or the you know, you know, wow. that's like what I have. So okay, you know, yeah. then just just go with it. So it's kind of like that's, you know, I don't know. I'm a I don't hold shit back, man, but, you know, it's, I, I know my subconscious is kind of uh, constantly, like, fucking, get me out, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> totally. You know, and I can't do it on bass, you know? I yeah, can do, like, yeah, individual yeah. little yeah. pinch harmonic, you know, artificial harmonics on bass just if I hold it in the right place and just yeah. start it, but I can't go, you know? Yeah. I don't I don't play it enough to, to oh, do man. it, but fucking in my head, I'm like, oh, God, dude, one day, you know? Holy I'll be moly. fucking whiz, uh, whiz the Giorgio, you know, fucking kill it or something. Yeah. Well, Diego, let's end this on a on a high note. I mean, I'm honored that that you made the drive to come hang out with us, man. Oh, dude. It was it was a lot. My a pleasure. Lot, a lot of fun. I learned a lot about you. <laughs> I, we talked about things I did not expect to even go into. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. And uh, that's my life right now, though. So you know. Yeah. We're cool, man. Bring it on out. Yeah, man. Thank you for for being here, man, and also uh. Thank you for everything that you've done for heavy music, man. Oh, for sure. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, we, you know, we wouldn't be here without without you and and the scourge and uh, still you're inspiring guys like me. Still, just keep keep playing. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it's it. Cool, man. Thanks for keeping that sound alive with you guys too, man. You know, Crazy. like I said, when I went to that show and there was so much love yeah. for Discord and a whole another scene. Well, yeah, obviously man. somebody's talking about it, and yeah, you're still still bumping it, you know, still, still bumping, fucking. still still talking about it, yeah. and we're and after this podcast, uh, I I know people are going to start bumping the scourge again, yeah, Boom. for sure, yeah, dude, and it ain't over, you know, we may be on a hiatus, man, but we're all bros, dude. Even, eventually, even if you know, who knows, half a song, one song, you know what I mean? Fucking 
it'll it'll be it'll be fun someday. Ricky, you know, like I said, me and Ricky, you know, we have plenty of talks and conversations, and Good. half of them turn into tears about how much we love our music, and yeah, we're bros, man. So you know, but why not? It's good. It's just time and a place, and you know what I mean. We'll get on it. It's good, man. Where can uh, where can people find you on the old uh, internet, social media? Social media, world? either Riff Wizard on Instagram or Diego Middle Initial U Sanchez on Facebook. And I don't really, I'm not that dude that goes posting a bunch of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you know, every now and then I get a little something. That I just got to release through, yeah. the, through the universe, and then I'll throw a little love out there. But uh, and then on YouTube, the Riff Wizard on YouTube, sick. So uh, the Indonesians actually gave me that nickname. Really? The, yeah, the Riff Wizard. Nice. Pretty, dude. pretty, this pretty, pretty, pretty stoked, dude. This you know good. what I mean? It's a, uh, it's a phenomenal name. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty rad. All right, Diego. Cheers, man. Cheers, Good bro. to see your brother. Nothing but love, man. Appreciate love, it. Man. Thank you guys too, you man. Guys, that's it. Oh yeah, for sure. Later.